Hi, um, my name's Mark, I'm from Brownmac. We're about to fit this tow bar from Heyman Reese into this L494 Range Rover Sport 2015 model. Now, what I'll do is I'll get you to scan over here, have a look at the parts we're about to fit. We've ordered this online actually. And as you can see, it comes complete with all the kits. Only thing we will say is, didn't come with spring washers, uh, which in which case we're actually going to apply Loctite. The blue 243. The tools required, they're generally 18 mil, normally 10 mil, screwdrivers, and we've got a tool here to help us remove some of the lugs. Comes with the instruction manual, which I suggest you go through thoroughly if you're going to attempt this yourself, uh, especially when you get to the wiring section, which is over here. Uh, we'll do that later on. First things first is we will need to come over here. I'm going to need to remove this section first and then we're going to work our way across here taking out these lugs and work our way across to here and then I'm going to get Bruce to put that camera down onto the man onto the stand and help me remove the entire tow bar uh, the entire bumper bar before we can fit this tow bar see how we go so what we're going to do is show you how to quick and easily remove these lugs, they're annoying. This is a fantastic tool, I suggest. For the money, you get on eBay and buy it, because you you won't regret it. And what you do is you quickly work, and they come out nice and easy. And if you see that one, looks like it wasn't put in properly. You need to fix that later. I'm gonna collect that over there. And we're gonna do the same on this side. The key with these is not to push too hard, just enough. Thread grubs, pull it and they come out without any scratches. Like I said, worth the money. Look at buying it. Next step is we're gonna come in and we're gonna take the hoist back up and we're gonna take this section off here. So what we're gonna do is we're going to turn these lugs 90 degrees and we should find that that comes down and out like that. Sometimes, yes. And then they slide off. So these are held in just by those lugs there that turn 90 degrees. And we'll place this over here. Place down. No, we don't step on it. There's a stone chip in that one, mate. These are just normal Phillips head screws. One. And then we've got 10 mils. A couple of bolts here. Okay. Okay, so we've got a couple more bolts here that we need to take out as well. Both 10 mils. see that they hold the bottom part of the bumper and nice and simple to take these out and then we'll work over into the wheel arches we'll show you where the screws are to pull out there it's all pretty straightforward you shouldn't struggle if you've got a hoist if you're lucky to have a hoist like we are if you're not then you'll be able to do it on some stands on the floor and if you come over here we'll see before we start, there's a screw under here we need to take out. Take this one out. Now I need to be careful not to take them all out. I'm trying to keep everything out exactly. I'll get Bruce to come over here and show. Hopefully the light is not too bad. We're going to need a smaller screwdriver to get in there and there. I can use this one for now. I'll go and get a stumpy for the other one. And um, we'll just locate. I'll take this one out. If we can come in, I don't know if Bruce can get in that wheel arch there. You can see it's starting to come off here. We've got a plastic lug that we need to pop off here. And we work our way up. There's another one up here. Screw. I'm going to leave that one to last and then do the other side. I think that's pretty clear. You just work your way around, taking them all out, and you can feel that the actual bumper is 
loose, just be careful, get someone to help you. Um, when the time comes, maybe leave one of the screws in, lightly in here, and another screw on the other side and get someone to help you. So we'll do that. Okay, so we've actually gone and got some more light just to make it a little bit clearer to see here. And we've got this screw here. That we're going to, I'm actually going to take it out completely. And I'll just quickly run through what we've taken off here. So we had, we had a screw under here. We had a plastic lug there, another screw there, and also another screw in there. And now you'll find we had to pull this back and review, reveal the, tow, the actual bumper bar where she's sitting in. And some of the lugs that you need to pop off to get, get it off for one thing at a time. We'll go and do the same on the other side and we'll, re we'll continue from there. Okay, so I thought I'd do a quick note. We've got a lug here that you can use a pointy nose pliers and you can easily get in there and just basically squash it up from behind rather than breaking it. I did it on the other side and of course it worked much easier than it, than it is here. Making me look like a fool, Bruce. There we go. There we go. If wherever you can, I don't know if Bruce can see that. You see, I've got that out. Wherever you can, if you can get the pointy nose behind, because you're yanking on these, have a habit of spreading, and you don't want to be replacing anything that you don't have to. Okay. Okay, so we're going to take the tail light out. And before we do that, we have to expose and remove this trim, which is painful take up working our way up don't need to take all that off all the way and we need to expose this trim i'm thinking we come in here and that should comes out like that so make sure that you work your way from the top down because as you can see these slide in that way and then we've got torque set screws and make sure you've got the right torque look at that i got it in one bruce come on that's impressive isn't it all right Handy little sets to have. If you get them right, and we take them out that simple. Now, I have seen people do this with Allen keys that sort of slot in there. But I would suggest you don't, although they are not that tight. What do you know? Taillight assembly slides out. Now, with most of these, you've got a push tang here. Push them down. Oh, scratch the bumper. Push the tab, and out it comes. Place this over here where you're not going to step on it again. And we can now expose more of the tow bar and over here you can see and once again my pointy nose pliers wherever they are should be able to get behind there and pull it out let's see how easily it pops out no, it, no. it's not going to be that easy So there we go, take the other tail light out. Okay, so this is, um, this is a part you may struggle with as we did. So we did a little bit of research and we found that these particular clips, the ones that are actually holding in this part of the bumper, actually follow and uh, are exactly the same type all the way along. So that means that if we actually work our way up, we should be able to get this to come off. 
in much the same fashion. You can see one's come off. And there we go. That is one of the things, have a close look there, Bruce, because the people need to see that that's the one they're gonna struggle with. And the way I did it was working my way right along. And we'll do the same on the other side. And... Okay, so we've got the bumper off. And oh, let's get Bruce to maybe push that down with the tangs. I can see, I think it's on the other side, that one there, or I don't know. You work it out. That's it. Not that simple. Just gonna no, no. Where you normally are you? That's it. Got it. Alright. Grab that bumper and see if there's anything else attached as we slowly take it off. We've got another wire here. Oh, that's just gonna come off. That's it. Alright, so you see that it, it's just hanging in there. Bumper is off. Turn this around here, I'm not too sure if you can see what we're doing. Once again, we're going to put the bumper over here, and I've got a sneaking suspicion that's going to be the hardest part of the job. I might get, um, grab that blanket over there that we got for free, the one on my desk. Okay, now we've got to take this, this reinforced bar off um, and discard it. Now, what's going to happen is the tow bar is replacing the reinforcing and uh, we're going to do that now so what we'll do is we'll take out all the bolts but we'll leave these two loose to make it nice and even all the water comes out. Here. And we've got holes in the reinforcing bar. Leave that loose and we'll work on the other two. Okay, so what we've done is we've grabbed the tow bar and leave that on for now and we've placed it up onto these two supports here to take the weight and you can see that it lines up directly with the bolt holes and um, our next step is to use the original bolts with a bit of Loctite um, and bolt it back up including the supports for the exhaust for the mufflers. We'll go over these again. Pulling in, pulling in. We're done. Now we're going to work on the on the bottom ones. I'm going to do them. They're 18 mil. I'm going to start off by taking the car up a bit. And we get under, and you can see you can access this bolt. And here, and once again, the same principles apply. You're pulling it in and you're adding a steel fabricated piece of metal. The chances of it being dead accurate are probably next to zero. So. Pull it in nice and easy, tighten it up, and work your way along. And you'll hear those noises every now and then. Don't get too scared, it's just pulling everything into shape. And that one's about right. We're going to do these two up, and same on the other side. Pretty straightforward. Up this brace here. It comes onto the tow bar 
Now, like I said, we did all of these bolts nice and evenly and loose, so we left a couple of turns on everything. And you saw from my last video, I was winding these in. And like I said, using a torque setting is not really gonna work. You're gonna have to wind it in till this plate starts to pull and sit flush under the car. And it takes a bit of experience, so if you're not confident to do it, then maybe find someone else. But anyway, di dialing in, we've got these bolts here. And once again, we've tightened these up. And then the last but not least are these, and you can see they're 18 mil. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull in and working from the inner edge out. So don't do this one up first. Do the lower one. Once again, you're pulling this fabricated piece of steel into shape to suit the car. And you can see how easily it starts to come together as you do it. So tight. And I always do one more for luck. And we're done, see? So we've worked our way from there, tightening these. And now, if you really wanted to, you could go back over these bolts again, just before you put the bumper on, but that's your call. Um, and the same will apply here. We've done these, we're gonna work our way. And this one, you can see, it's pulling into shape a little bit differently. Like I said, you, you may struggle. If you did this in any other fashion, you may find trying to get these bolt holes, they just won't line up. So, and now we can work on these top ones. You see they loosen right up. Working our way up. And we go over again. Once again, you can see we've used Loctite. Uh, these did not come in the kit with spring washers, which I would prefer. They're even better, Nylox which I love, love nylon. All right, done, 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 locked up. Next part is bumper back on, and I'm pretty sure we can do the wiring last because it exposes this part. And we'll see how we go. Okay, so Bruce has finally worked out how to wire in into the back of the pin connectors. So we'll just go over here and we'll see what we've done. We've got uh, the two blanking plugs that sit just back here. You actually remove, I'll get Bruce to take that one off as well. You need to remove both of these blanking plugs and take them back over the bench. And they're actually numbered, which took us a long time to work out where the numbers are. Why? Because Bruce will show the numbers. Uh, where are they? They're located there in the smallest font you could possibly imagine. Pin one and three and, and two 
and four. And the other, the other one? Can you see those? Or do we need to zoom in? So, <laughs> it's very even smaller. Even smaller, but what we've got to do, if we go over to the instructions here, you can see that the instructions here say that you'd simply need to remove the blanking plugs on the back, which is these, Pin. these blanking plugs, and replace with uh, the pins allocated and lined up with this chart here. So we need to put on the four-way connector, we need to put one wire, we need to put one blanking plug out of number three, which is what we're doing right now, and replace this white wire, which is the larger one, the bigger spade connector. And that goes in the back. So we're about to do that now. And um, so here we've got these other ones. Pin one, two, three. And these are Four, going five, to go six. as shown, yellow, green, red, black, to the pins at the back, one, three, four, five, six. So we're actually gonna do that and we'll show you the end product when it's done. How does that go in and which way does There's it There's a little tub, if you, you can see inside there. This is a macro yep. job. Yeah, there's a tiny tab and that tab goes into that cavity, right? That it fits in that into, into cavity that, there. Into that cavity there. So you're gonna slide it in. You might as well do it while I'm here. So we'll just slide it in here. And you'll hear a click, won't we? Hey, what do you know? And it's awesome. got a rubber seal on the back, right? We'll just double check that we've um, located that in the right slot. Did the rubber seal go in as well, did it? Yes, it did. Yep. Okay. And that's uh, pin three. So we'll show us three. what it looks like on the other side now. Now around that way. So, we'll so that's... It's secure now. So we can okay. see there's one spade connector sticking out in the rest, okay? So now, okay. Okay, so just so repeat that. So now we're going on to the other one. You gotta leave pin two, all right? Yeah. <laughs> Which one's pin two? Pin two is this one here in the middle. So you're gonna leave that one? So I'll leave him, but all these other five come out. Come out, all right, let's do that. A little video now showing how Bruce is pulling these out because it's not that easy. We had a tool in our little kit that we're using and out they come. So one's going to stay. Anyway, you get the idea. We'll do another video when we're plugging them back in. Okay, so we've worked it out. We've got all the plugs out except what we've left in number two, was it? Did we leave? Number two. Number two. Pin number in. two. So okay, this so is number one. And once again, you're putting it in the Just right direction. Just orientate the pins in the correct All right, so position. We... So they click in place. It's not going to help. It's not going to... And it's... Uh... Is it going in? Come on, you're a, you're a world champion at this. This is one. Is it the other way around? We stuffed around a bit and what we did find in the end that uh, pushing these in it sometimes works to actually try and pull the connector. Once you get the connector in you can pull it through and it actually with a little bit of lubricant on the rubbers too seem to work well but what we've got now is we've followed this this here and we've got it right. You can see the end product is the connector there and she's ready to go back in. So Bruce can go over here and plug it back in Bruce. We won't need that just yet. And you can see here, it can plug directly back in where it came out of. And worked both. And the next step is we're just going to screw in the, um, the flat blade pin connector and plug it in. So, we have to cut a section out of the two cowlings. You can see we've put the bumper back on and everything's in gear and we've actually plugged the wiring in. So here you can actually install this section and it's not a little bit fiddly, but I got it on before. And you can actually push it sort of into place 
and you can see the bolts hold line up at the back and you can see from here we now have it's in the in the instructions it's showing 100 mil by 100 mil but we're actually going to start lower and see where we go from there i'd rather cut less out and do it in two stages so what we've done is we've marked here marked there we've come down to this groove here and we've drilled the hole and we're going to use this dremel and we're going to cut a section out of here and we're going to push it back in and see how she fits and if it doesn't fit then we're going to go down to the next level um, and we'll see how we go all right so we're gonna we've taken a section out and we're going to put it back into place and we'll see how we go and see if we've taken enough out and i would say for now i'm guessing that's probably not going to be enough because now we have to work on these corners here and from what i'm seeing now that still has to go up so we're probably gonna to have to do what it says and come down to this next section here. But as you can see, we've got the we've got the lines right. So it's always best to do it in two sections. Nice and neat. So what we will do is we'll leave that there and we'll mark these two sections. If you have a look on the on this here. Okay, so what we've done is we've taken the cow and we've had two or three goes of this. So I think we might've got it right this time, but um, we've taken the section out here to here. So that might help you if you're gonna do it. Now we may have gone a little low here, but I've gone down to that line just to keep it nice and even. We'll see how, how it lines up. Either way, it looks pretty good. I might clean it up with a little bit of 80 grade or sandpaper or something. We'll see how we go. Let's see how she fits. We've got a couple of slots at the back, under there, and look at that. Up into that section, and up into that section. Yeah, maybe a little, a little deep on that, but still pretty damn good. Looks good, doesn't it? So, and that's, if you have a look at that, we're gonna bolt that up now. Like I said, I'll, I might take it down and clean it up with a little bit of 80 grade paper, we'll bolt it on, then we move on to the next section. Here. I think we got it right. I'm still videoing them. Okay, so let's see. Under, 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 under. Voila! Push them in, push them, but before I do that, I'm gonna take that uh, I'm gonna take that out and I'm gonna run a black texture around the inside of here get rid of the white paint because this particular model has a paint job done at um after the white factory where they paint the back sections black the roof black and uh, the bumpers white so you can see the paint coming through so i'm gonna run a black texture along that put it back together and we are done okay so we put it back in and uh here's the finished product 
That slides in there. And you got this UV pen. You can just simply push it on. Locks on. Nice and easy to get on. And it comes with U box. New shackles, I should say. Now, I'm not going to leave these on because this is going to rattle like hell. But you'll get an idea of what it's meant to look like when you're using it. And all the parts fitted that came in the kit. The one thing that was missing, which is annoying us right now, is the two little screws. There's no screws for us to hold it down. I'm going to have to go and find a couple. Uh, and they're quite small and I have to get nuts and spring washers. So I'll have to go to the hardware and pick that up. But if you scan back, that's the Heyman Reese fitted to the Sports, well, Range Rover Sports L494. Hope it helps. Have fun.